Talia there champs and welcome to the show. Today I'll be showing you how to install your hard drives and do the initial setup on your QNAP NAS. Now I'll be doing this on the QNAP TS453A. This will pretty much apply for any new QNAP NAS. So let's start with what you'll need. You'll need obviously the QNAP NAS itself, a Phillips head screwdriver. You'll need your hard drives. I have one here, a WD Red hard drive, and I recommend WD Red hard drives. So you can check out my video on why I recommend these hard drives. One to four in this case. We'll start off with just putting one in. And you definitely want NAS hard drives, and I recommend the WD Reds. So along with your hard drive, you'll need obviously the power for your NAS and an ethernet cable to connect to your router. You'll need some screws to secure your hard drives into the tray. So obviously you've got to take the tray out. You may have a lock on your trays. If so, unlock it. But in this case, you just pull the lever and pull out one of the trays. On this particular QNAP and most QNAPs or any NAS, you usually want to populate the drives from left to right. When you look in front on at the device, you want to populate the drives from left to right. Now, once you've pulled out the tray, you want to make sure you put in the hard drive the right way. You want to get the blank front end of the hard drive and put it into the tray entrance. So what you want to do is make sure those connectors are not that way. You want to make sure the connectors are facing the other way towards the entrance of the tray. Then you just place it in, slide it in, line up the hole, and as you can see, the connector to the hard drive is hanging at the end of the entrance of the tray there. We'll get our screws and screw it in. Once you've hand tightened all four, then go and nip them up firmly, but don't tighten them too hard, because you'll just strip the screws. So once you've done that, you want to put the tray in the correct way, and just push it in, and it'll snap into place and the lever will drop. Repeat the process if you have more hard drives, if you've got one, just make sure you put them in sequence. So if you have only one more hard drive, don't put it in the fourth bay, make sure you put it in the second bay there. Now once you've populated all the drives, now what you want to do is plug the power in, plug in the ethernet cable to the number one ethernet port on your NAS, and then plug the other end of the ethernet cable into your router. Then proceed to power on the NAS. Now it will take a couple of minutes to initialize and then we're going to go through the setup process. Now once it's had a couple of minutes to initialize and it's ready to go, what we want to do is open up a browser and type start.qnap.com. Then you want to select your particular NAS model here as I'm doing here. We'll just continue with a cloud installation. Now, once you click on cloud installation, you'll come up with this screen here and there will be a sticker on your QNAP NAS. Just punch in that code here and we want to continue. You also have the option of using a QR code, but we'll just punch in the key manually here and just set up your account here with my QNAP cloud. And then we go on to next step. Now it says register my QNAP cloud device and you want to put a name of your device here. So I just left it with the number for this example but you might want to just name it and then continue on and it's going to ask you are you a home or business user obviously select the appropriate use of your NAS device and let's start with the smart installation so we click on that and now we want to enter a NAS name and password for the NAS and just continue which is admin by default set up your set up your time and date now, once you get onto this configure your network settings, if you don't know what you're doing, just click next. It pretty much automatically does them for you. If you're a network guru, dig into those and set what you want. And so here we have a page that says cross-platform file transfer service. Now, if you're living in only a Mac environment, select the Apple one. If you're only living in the Windows environment, select the Windows one. You can select all three, I believe. And then you have all these options to enable features. So if you're going to use this as a media server or as an iTunes server, tick all these and then proceed. So here is where you'll select your RAID volume. Now, depending on how many hard drives, there may be different options enabled or disabled. But generally speaking, the best RAID option is RAID 5 if you have enough hard drives. I think you need at least three hard drives for RAID 5. If you've only got two, RAID 1's the best option because you want some sort of redundancy or backup built in. 
you can select how big your volume size is but for me i'm just going to select it raid 5 select all the hard drives here and for volume space i'm just going to select max so that the whole volume so all the space on my hard drives i'm going to use in one volume also here you have the option of encrypting it if you want it encrypted i'm not going to encrypt mine i'll just continue and then it's going to give you a summary of your setup and check it all if it all looks good click on next when you click on next it's going to warn you that you're erasing that you're going to lose all your data and you're starting up a new volume and you just click on yes obviously if there is any data on those hard drives you want to back those up once you proceed it will come up with this page and this is going to take a little bit of time so go grab yourself a coffee tea whatever it's setting up your volume here this will take a while so in the meantime what you want to do is download and install QFinder Pro and this will help you find your NAS and it makes it easier to set up. So I'll leave a link in the description on where to download this. After the progress bar goes to 100% and your NAS has finished creating its volume, it may log you in straight away or you may have to use this QFinder Pro. For me I had to use the QFinder Pro. I waited an hour or two. It sort of hung on the progress bar, but I just downloaded this QFinder Pro. I installed it, and then once I installed it, I selected it. It came up with this email not configured warning. Just ignore that. Then I selected the NAS on the list there. I clicked on login. So then you just use that admin login and password you used to create the account before in the installation procedure before. Now, when I logged in, it came up with this certificate warning. Now, don't panic. There's nothing wrong with this. It's just because you haven't updated your QNAP software and the certificate's out of date. So it will tell you you've got to update your system. So you go ahead and do that. And then that certificate warning will go. So there you have it. You've installed your hard drives and then you've set up your RAID volume and your NAS is pretty much ready to go here. You should be able to find it under network devices on your computer now in your file explorer. And then you should be able to go into your file explorer and on a Windows machine, just go to network, click on QNAP or whatever you named your NAS device. And then you should see the shared folders there where you can transfer data between your computer and your NAS. And if you can't see your QNAP in your file explorer, just restart the NAS and restart your computer and you should be able to see it in the network section of your file explorer then. And it's pretty much the same with the Mac, although with the Mac you may have to just go to connect server. So that's it. I'll be doing a lot more videos on this QNAP device and how to set up your QNAP device. My next video on the QNAP NAS will be about home theater. So using HD station and the remote, using it as a home theater device that way and actually using Linux station. So you can use your QNAP as a Linux home theater PC using Ubuntu and we'll explore those two options. And we'll see if it actually could replace your home theater PC. So that's it guys. If I helped you out there, give me a thumbs up, like, subscribe, and until next time, tally ho. Sunshine, high, high, no smile.